Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. So from today's video onwards, we are going to start with module four of this subject, microwave engineering and antenna theory. So in now till now in in the first three modules, we have discussed about uh, microwave systems, microwave networks, and in the previous module, we have studied about basics of antenna and its parameters and uh, some important relationships also we have seen of different antenna parameters and we have seen how it is interrelated with each other with respect to the uh, components so in module 4 again we are going to continue with the antenna concepts only with some still more advanced antenna parameters which is very very essential for the radiation purpose okay so starting with short electric dipole so in the previous module also we have seen one simple topic which is which was related to short electric dipole that is uh, uh, finding the effective aperture and directivity of short electric dipole right so in this module we are going to see with the complete description about short electric dipole and what and all are the fields which are involved in a short electric dipole fields of short dipole and different different expressions with respect to the uh, spherical coordinate system okay here it should be mainly focusing on the spherical coordinate system so one by one let us start today's topic is about introduction to the short electric dipole and fields of short electric dipole so this is one simple short dipole uh, the, uh, this is the representation of it and this is the length of that short dipole and uh, equivalent circuit could be something somehow written like this that is uh, two nodes attached uh, two attached nodes and one node is given as plus q and another node is given as minus q where this is the positive and the negative charge a short linear conductor is called as a short electric dipole if the dipole is vanishingly short then it is called as infinite that is if the dipole is not visible to the naked eye or it's very small so that it won't, won't be visible then they are called as infinites or a uh, other word is for that is infinite dipole okay the condition for infinite dipole is L is uh, strictly less than lambda. That is, it is very, very less than lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. Plates at the end of the dipole causes uniform current to flow along the length. So, the plates which is attached at the end of the dipole, in this case, uh, you could be considering these two nodes as the plates. So, which is attached at the end of the dipole, th those plates are responsible for the uniform current flow along the length of the dipole okay so the diameter d is very small compared to l so the d is less than l very smaller than l for the analysis short dipole is replaced by its equivalent so the the equivalent is this here it is uh, uh, in between two nodes two attached nodes where this is plus q and this is minus q so this is the equivalent circuit in order to represent a simple short dipole so this is all about the introduction part of the short dipole now let us get to the fields which are involved in the short dipole so now this is the concept of fields of short dipole so here you see these are the fields which is involved figure says that these are the current elements with respect to the point charges in the spherical coordinate system SES system okay so you see here this is a three dimensional figure where we are having three components r theta and phi so with respect to that we are having three electric field components which is flowing in the r direction theta direction and phi direction you see here in a free space at this uh, plane surface you have kept one point p okay with respect to that the angles are formed that is uh, from origin to that p it is uh, uh, taken and the angle formed here with respect to origin is theta okay and from this point p there are three fields flowing that is one is er e theta and e phi okay three fields because you are considering the current element in the SES system then the angle formed with respect to the curve of the uh, radial component that is called as the phi angle and the dipole is placed here so that the angles are split in the uh, ordered manner okay so this is the diagram of the fields of short dipole so you see here now if the current i is flowing in the dipole the effect of this current at point P is not immediate. Okay. So whatever the current I which is flowing uh, through the dipole that is present inside the dipole, the effect of that current 
at point P is not immediate because the point P is not attached to the dipole it is kept in a free space okay it is not directly given to dipole so that's why the effect of that won't be immediate it would be taking some amount of time but after some time it is called as the retardation effect so that waiting time you require in order to the current to be getting affected that effect is called as the retardation effect or that time is called as retardation time for that retardation time we require some parameters now let us see that first for that you should be considering the current i is equal to i naught e to the power j omega t okay so after considering the retardation effect it would be somehow looking like this for retardation effect the i is mentioned in bracket so that is equal to i naught e to the power j omega t minus r by c okay so why this uh, t minus r by c because as we have mentioned that it is not uh, it is taking some amount of time that some amount of time is uh, measured by this r by c component that is called as the retardation current okay so here uh, i is the retarded current r by c is the retardation current and c is the velocity of light and r is the distance okay so now electric and magnetic field can be expressed in terms of vector and scalar magnetic potentials that is e can be e stands for electric field it that can be represented as minus j omega a minus delta v okay scalar as well as vector magnetic potentials are mentioned here and uh, h can be represent, represented as 1 by m into del cross e that is a cross product of the area which is present in the field of short dipole so the, the three components of e that is electric field are given by as follows because from point p we have told that three components are passed three electric uh, field components that is one is er e theta and e phi er is given by minus j omega ar minus dou v by dou r e theta is given by minus j omega a theta minus 1 by r dou v by dou theta and uh, e phi is given by minus j omega a phi minus dou v by dou phi okay so these are the components uh, spherical coordinates with respect to the field components so here since a phi is zero and v is independent of phi that is from the figure we could be uh, mentioning that a phi the phi component here is zero why because you see here in this figure the phi component is present below the uh, in the quadrant it is present below the point which is placed here so it is opposite the angle is opposite so that's why at this field we don't have any phi component so that's why we should be considering all the phi components to be equal to zero and v is independent of phi so the phi whatever the angle which is produced with respect to this field electric field which is through point p that is independent of the voltage that is whatever there is no voltage which is uh, surrounded around this angle phi so that's why uh, v is independent of phi so therefore e phi also would be equal to zero now e phi component is completely gone now uh, er can be written as j minus j omega a z cos theta minus dou v by dou r and e theta can be written as minus j omega a z sin theta minus 1 by r dou v by dou theta okay so now with respect to this we could be finding the two values of a z and v so the az value is given by az is equal to mu di by 4 pi r where i is the retarded current uh, name this as equation 3 then v is equal to i l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught l into c by j omega r square plus 1 by r okay so this 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught that can be also be replaced as 9 into 10 to the power 9 it is one of the same that is the dielectric uh, a constant at dielectric medium that value should be fixed here for the potential component this is the scalar potential here so name this as equation 4 now what to do substitute 3 in 3 and 4 in equations 1 and 2 after that we would be getting the two equations one is er er can be written as il cos theta divided by 2 pi epsilon naught if you do the simplification we would be getting this term into 1 by cr square plus 1 by j omega r cube okay where uh, r is the distance, c is the velocity of light, epsilon naught is the absolute permittivity and the cos theta is the angle which is responsible for the formation of electric field. Okay, so these components are required for this E suffix r. Now, for the second spherical coordinate E suffix theta, 
it is given by this term here you see here e theta is given as i l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into j omega by c square r plus 1 by c r square plus 1 by j omega r q okay so these are the factors which are responsible for the fields in short electric dipole so there is one more factor which is responsible with respect to the magnetic field intensity that is the impedance the z naught impedance uh, that is the intrinsic impedance under free space you should be calculating with respect to the magnetic field intensity produced in the short dipole so how how can we obtain it you see here uh, it can, it is obtained in this uh, following manner that is the magnetic field obtained by h is equal to 1 by m del cross a as we have mentioned in the uh, previous page also right so that only i am writing it again now we know that the h uh, h magnetic field h can be represented in terms of spherical coordinate system as hr ar vector plus h theta a theta vector and plus h pi a phi where hr and h theta we should be considering equal to zero now in case of the magnetic field because in case of magnetic field only phi components are produced because you see here in these r and theta components are only for electric fields whereas magnetic field and electric field are opposite to each other they repel so that's why whatever angle is formed here it is opposite to that of r and theta component so here it could be here the press there would be the presence of magnetic field in this dipole so that's why we should be considering only the phi component so now h phi would be equal to i l sin theta divided by 4 pi into j omega by c r plus 1 by r square okay where r is very large 1 by r square and 1 by r cube would be getting banished from the term h phi okay so the power field components are given by one is e theta and another one is h phi so how it is mentioned as you see here e theta component is given by j omega i l sin theta divided by 4 pi epsilon naught c square r okay and h phi is given by j omega i l sin theta divided by 4 pi c r so here what i have done i have replaced omega by c as beta okay since beta is equal to omega by c so here omega by c is there so that is replaced by beta here here also omega by c is there that is replaced by beta so these are the power field components e theta divided by h phi so this e theta divided by h phi would be giving you our impedance value z naught why because for e theta the unit is electric field unit is volts per meter and for magnetic field it is amperes per meter so the, uh, it would be V by I. So V by I component is equal to the impedance. That's why E theta by H phi is equal to the impedance value Z naught. So that uh, those these two you substitute it now. After substituting some of the terms would be getting cancelled. That is J beta I L sin theta from both numerator and numerator, denominator it would be getting cancelled. 4 pi would be getting cancelled. R component would be cancelled. We would be left with only 1 by epsilon naught C. So that would be equal to 1 by epsilon naught and 1 by c can be written as we know that c is equal to square root of mu naught epsilon naught. So that I have replaced it here. So after replacing just cross multiply and, and after grouping you would be getting root mu naught epsilon naught divided by root epsilon naught epsilon naught. That is I have split this as root epsilon naught epsilon naught so that these two terms gets cancelled. So we are left with z naught is equal to square root of mu naught by epsilon naught that is equal to 377 ohms so this is the intrinsic impedance of the free space that is 377 ohm with respect to the magnetic field intensity of the short electric dipole so these things you need to be requiring to know under short electric dipole so if they ask the question related to this these many things if you write easily you could be scoring 7 to 8 marks so please mention this and try to write it okay so this notes i'm going to put it in the video's description go and access it and uh, try to uh, grasp how, how much ever I have tried, uh, I have explained it and refer these notes, make your own notes and try to learn by your own, okay? It would be very, very impactful and uh, you would be understanding more if you learn by your own, okay? Yeah. So that's all for this video, guys. In the next video, we are going to discuss with the radiation resistance of the short electric dipole, okay? So stay tuned for that. Like this video. Uh, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends and keep supporting. Thank you.